Hello students, uh, today's topic is the structure of eye under sense organ. You know the structure of eye is very very important. So from here just the different types, uh, different parts of our eyes and the different uh, mechanism which is occurring uh, due to our vision. So that I will explain. Uh, so under sense organ that is the structure of eye. Look at the structure, I have drawn the structure that is the structure of eye. Mainly three layers are there. Mainly in our the structure of our eyes, three main layers. Number one sclera, number two ovoid, number three retina. So three main covering, three main layers. First of all, where is the location of our eyes? You know, within the uh, orbits. These are the orbits present here, and within the orbits, our eyes are located. Okay, and it is connected with our nervous system or with our brain by uh, you know optical nerve. So in nervous system, just I told you there are lots of cranial nerves arising from our brain. So optical nerve, after all, uh, connected with our the with the structure of our eyes. You see, it is coming from our brain and it is ultimately added with our uh, eyes. So due to the optical nerve, we can uh, see any object. Okay. So the structure of eye. Look at the structure. Three main parts or three main layers are there. Number one, sclera. Number two, cornea. Number three, retina. Look at the structure. The outer layer or the outer covering of the eyes. See the structure. Here is the outer layer. This is the structure which I have drawn here by black marker. That is the structure that is known as sclera. So sclera, H C A E R A. That is the structure which is present here, the outer portion. That is sclera. And the sclera, extension of sclera is coming here. Look at the structure. So the extension of sclera, which is coming uh, here, it is the structure uh, present. It is known as cornea. Look at the structure. The extension of uh, sclera, which is coming here. It is the portion which is known as cornea, the outermost portion, that is cornea, and uh, not the outermost, uh, the fir first portion that is conjunctiva, and the second portion that is cornea, means the extension of uh, sclera in the front portion of our eye, uh, that is uh, see the structure. So it is conjunctiva, but it is the extension of sclera. And the sclera extension, that is the uh, extension of sclera which I have drawn here by black marker. Oh, okay, so that is the structure of sclera. And after sclera, next portion which is present, which I have drawn here by blue marker, that is the portion that is known as cooloid. So just after sclera, next structure which is present here, it is known as cooloid. Cooloid is the second layer of our eye. And Within the choroid, look at the structure here. Within the choroid, what are the different parts are there? The choroids are ultimately connected, and here there are some portion. Just like these are the muscles which are present here, that is known as circular ciliary muscles. In the end of the choroid, circular ciliary muscles are present. In the end of the choroid, circular ciliary muscles are present. Look at the structure, end of the choroid, circular ciliary muscles are present, and the joining of the choroid. Where the choroid is joining with the lens. These are the uh, portion that is suspensory ligament. So now what do you mean by suspensory ligament? Suspensory ligament means the muscles which is present in the extension part of the choroid which helps to join uh, the lens. That is lens, you know, in the middle portion lens is present. So that is the structure that is lens. So with the help of suspensory ligament, lens, are, the lens is joined here and the uh, uh, in the suspensory uh, ligament helps in the contraction and relaxation of lens by which uh, we can see object and suspensory ligaments are present here and the, this portion this uh, portion with the muscles which is present that is ciliary muscles that is also present here and also there is also another extension part of choroid these are the part known as iris look at the structure just just before the lens, the blue color portion that is iris. So that is iris. Iris. It is also iris. It is also iris. And in between iris, just lens and iris present. And in the middle portion, it is vacant. It is the portion which is known as pupil. So pupil is present 
fibril uh, is present in between iris, in between iris and in the middle portion that is uh, blank. And in this uh, location, Minsimno, just I am telling you, first layer that is sclera, extension of sclera, uh, which is present here, that is the extension of sclera, that is choroid. And the outer portion of the eyes, conjunctiva is present, then choroid is present. And then it is back end portion, means it is blank portion. So, in the blank portion, just before the eyes, there is a uh, uh, liquid present, it is known as aqua solution. So, here aqua solution is present here. So, in this gap, in the gap, aqua solution is present. And in the total portion, means total the structure of the eyes here, vitreous humor is present. So, here aqua humor, here vitreous humor. Aquas humor is present here, vitreous humor is present in the entire portion. Okay, so that is the main structure that is, is under the uh, choroid, the third portion of our eye that is retina. So, which is retina, the innermost layer of our eyes where rod cells and cone cells are present. So, that is the structure that is retina. Also, I have drawn here by black marker the innermost portion. Look at the portion by black marker, the innermost layer of our eyes, there are the structure, the innermost layer that is known as retina. Within retina, rod cells and cone cells are present. So, also within retina, also yellow spot and uh, blind spot, these are also uh, present. And you know, the sclera ultimately connected uh, and the choroid also ultimately connected by, uh, uh, sorry, the retina ultimately connected with optic nerve because it will connect, uh, it will go, uh, it will uh, connect it with our brain, with our nervous system. So ultimately it is connected by the optic nerve. So that is the structure of our complete eye, outermost portion, outermost uh, structure of our eye sclera. Then second innermost layer that is choroid and you know under uh, uh, the choroid there are some parts uh, just like iris, ciliary muscles, suspensory ligaments, these are the parts similarly also people these are the also uh, parts of uh, choroid and the innermost part of eyes that is retina within the retina rod cells and cone cells are there. Now I will tell you about sclera. What about sclera and what is given in your book about sclera? Just I am reading, therefore I will explain. Listen, the sclerotic layer is made of through fibers, tissues and is white in color. The white portion on the front of the eye is the sclerotic layer itself visible through the conjunctiva. So that is written here and also you know uh, it is written that about cornea is a part of cornea sometimes the cornea of some patients turns opaque or white and non-functional in such cases the defective cornea can be replaced by a healthy cornea from the donated eyes so we can change cornea when the cornea is defective you know when the cornea which is present here if it is defective so we can change cornea so that is the extension part white color structure present uh, that is clear next portion that is uh, Choroid layer. Under choroid layer, what are the different parts? You know, within the choroid layers, uh, melanin is present. So, melanin also present in our skin, you know. So, within the uh, choroid layer, uh, melanin is present and the function of melanin which prevents light rays from reflecting and scattering inside the eyes. So, what is the function of melanin in our eyes which is present in the choroid which helps to prevent reflection and scattering of light because if the light reflected or scattering so we can see the proper object easily so it helps in reflection and scattering uh, it helps to prevent reflection and scattering of light uh, that is the function of melanin which is present in choroid uh, what is the function of ciliary body uh, in the front of the eye the choroid expands to form the structure ciliary body containing circular muscles the smooth muscles in the ciliary body alter the shape of the lens that is the function of ciliary body the smooth muscles of the ciliary body alter the shape of the lens so that is the function now next is iris look at the structure the iris is present what is the function of iris the iris also 
is the extension of the choroid particularly covering the legs and leaving a circular opening in the center it is known as pupil you know the pupil uh, what is the function the adjacent uh, of the size of the pupil regulates the amount of light entering in the eye of course the adjacent side of the pupil regulates the amount of light which is entering into the into our eyes so it helps to regulate the light entering in our uh, in our eyes so that is the function of uh, pupil so these are under uh, choroid okay now next is very very important that is retina Retina is very very important because whenever we are seeing any object, the, there will be production of image. Okay, the image will form in our retina, but it is real image, but it will ultimately inverted. You know, whenever we are seeing any object, ultimately uh, the image which is formed in our retina that is completely inverted. Okay, so in the object when I am saying it, so in the retina it will form the inverted image. Okay, that is the reason behind it. So within the retina very very important thing two cells are there rod cells and cone cells and these are very very important in our vision okay because within the rod cells rhodopsin pigment is there and within the cone cells iodopsin pigments are there okay now what is the function of rhodopsin and what is the function of rod cell ultimately rod cell responsible for the vision in dim light okay so the rod cells which is present in our retina responsible for the vision in dim light and the cone cells which is present and within the cone cells just I told you that iodopsin uh, pigment is present so cone cells responsible for the uh, uh, vision in bright light ok so in bright light uh, ultimately cone cells responsible for this vision just I am telling you one example at night what will occur whenever we uh, switch off all the lights uh, so you know at night what will occur uh, it is dim light we can see any object clearly so the rod cells are activated now. So the rod cells are activated means the rhodopsins are also active. Okay, because within the rod cells, rhodopsins are there. And rod cells are responsible for the vision in dim light. So now the rod cells are activated. If you switch on the light, so you will see that first of all you can uh, see any object properly for a fraction of a second, therefore you can. What will occur? Actually, when it was very dark, so the rod cells are working, and within the rod cell, rhodopsins are also work activated. Now, if you switch on the light, now the cone cells are activated. So the cone cells are activated means within the cone cells, iodopsins are there. So iodopsins will activate now. Actually, it was the activation of rhodopsin when it was in dim light or at night. But now, if you switch on light, so it is very bright. So we need bright vision. For bright vision, which will activate ultimately cone cells will activate. Okay, so within the cone cells also iodopsins are there, and it is the uh, it is mainly responsible for the vision in bright light. So therefore, when the cone rod cells are activated, there will be activation of uh, cone cells in bright light. That is the reason behind it. So for uh, in this case, ultimately uh, we will then uh, see the object. Okay. So these are the functions of rod cells and cone cells. Now where is the location? Especially rod cells are located in the peripheral region of uh, retina where the cone cells are loca located in the center of retina. What are the differences between rod cells and cone cells? Rod cells, within the rod cells, rhodopsins are there. Within the cone, cone cells, iodopsins are there. Rod cells responsible for dim light vision, uh, cone cells responsible for bright light visions okay uh, vision for uh, bright light uh, with rod cells are located in the peripheral region of retina in the peripheral region of retina rod cells are located and in the uh, center of retina cone cells are located these are some differences very very important for you rod cells and cone cells next is what do you mean by yellow spot what do you mean by blind spot yellow spot means the location where most of the uh, cells, especially rod cells and cone cells, especially rod cells uh, vision for dim light but cone cells vision for bright light. So the region where most of the cells are present and mainly they are cone cells. So the site of bright vision, here is the site of bright vision. So this region known as yellow spot. So yellow spot means that's where the uh, most of the uh, cells which are ultimately you know, uh, cone cells for bright vision is present so it is known as cone cells 
uh, it is known as yellow spot where the most of the cells especially uh, the cells important for bright visions mainly the cone cells are present and few rod cells are present so the, it is the site for bright vision that is known as raw, uh, yellow spot and what do you mean by blind spot where blind spot means the location where ultimately cells are absent neither rod cells or cone cells these are absent so it is not the it is not the perfect uh, position for vision so for this case we say that is blind spot okay so in the retina blind spot and uh, yellow spot is present along with the rod cells and cone cells are uh, present and this is the structure of i now i will tell you about uh, what do you mean by aqueous humor and what do you mean by vitreous humor and their function aqueous humor present here so ultimately it will give protection to the eyes i am just ready what is given in your book for see yes aqueous humor watery fluid present function is given listen uh, keeps the lens moist and protects it from physical shock exactly whenever it is present here so it gives uh, protection to the lens point number 2 it refracts light so it will not helps in reflection but it refracts light okay so it helps to refract lights what is given in vitreous humor vitreous humor is a larger cavity of the eyeball behind the lens it is filled with a transparent jelly like thick fluid called vitreous humor what is the function of vitreous humor it helps in keeping the shape of the eyeball exactly when by it is present here so it helps to keep the shape of the eyeball here and also it protects the retina and its nerve ending so it protects the retina also and its nerve ending that is the function of our uh, vitreous humor so it is very very important uh, function of aqueous humor function of vitreous humor okay now next point that is how do we see okay how do we see point number 1 entry of light rays you know entry of light rays occur through here how from conjunctiva then cornea then aqueous humor then lens then vitreous humor of course so entry of light will occur first of all it will come into cornea or into conjunctiva and after conjunctiva there is cornea and after cornea uh, Or uh, conjunctiva cornea, there is aqueous humor. After aqueous humor, there is lens, and there is the vitreous humor. And therefore, the ray will come here. That is in retina. So, within the retina, the ray will fall. The uh, which the objects you want to see. Okay. So that is the entry of light. Point number two, focusing of image. First, the curvature of the cornea converges the light rays to some extent, and the lens converges them. for that to form an image on the retina the image of the retina is important and real so the image will form when the the light rays will come it will fall in fall down into the retina so the image will form into the retina and it will be ultimately real but inverted next is transmission of nerve impulse from retina to brain you know from retina your nerve impulse will go because optic nerve is present here so transmission of nerve impulse from retina to brain that will occur and in next stage means in fourth stage there will be interpretation by the brain means the brain will determine brain will also see the object and therefore it will give signal to the to here and therefore we can see the object very clearly so that is the way we can see any object that is the structure next is accommodation the accommodation means you know so so for whenever we just uh, we see any objects Uh, if it is large or if it is very small, so we can at least see the object. If it is very large, so it will not happen that it will not accommodate in our uh, retina. So if it is very large or if it is very small, it can easily accommodate in our accommodate in our it, it can easily accommodate in our retina. So that is the accommodation. Accommodation means the power in which uh, within the retina the uh, image of the objects in. Uh, easily can happen. Okay, so that is about some terms regarding the structure of eyes. Also, there are some diseases. Also, there uh, just like uh, you know, there are eye disease, eye related diseases are there uh, that uh, you have to learn it. So, the eye related diseases that I I will tell you in your group uh, by audio. So that is the class regarding uh, the structure of. eyes 
So from here you will draw, you will also practice the structure of eyes and different parts of our eyes. It is very, very important for you because you know the structure of eyes, what is the location of the structure of eyes you can Just like if I say what is the function of severe muscle, what is the function of vitreous oma, what is the function of aqua zoma, you can easily write it. Okay. And also rod cells and port cells. So thank you students. Uh, now in the group, so I am sending you uh, some disease related to eyes. Thank you.